Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into the ancient world of philosophy, a time when some of the brightest minds grappled with the biggest questions. What is happiness? How do we achieve it? Well, two schools of thought, Stoicism and Epicureanism, emerged with surprisingly different answers. Buckle up, because we're about to unpack the battle between happiness and pleasure. Now, I've spent years poring over dusty tomes, translating ancient Greek, and even arguing with the occasional grumpy ghost of a philosopher. Just kidding, maybe. This stuff is my jam. But fear not. I'll translate these complex ideas into something fun and relatable. So let's meet the main characters in this philosophical play. Welcome to the Abyss of Wisdom. Introducing the players, Stoicism and Epicureanism. On the left, we have Epicurus, a third century BC philosopher who liked cheese and chilling in his garden. More on that later. Epicurus believed pleasure was the key to a good life. But hold on. Not the hedonistic, champagne-guzzling kind. Epicurus was all about simple, sustainable pleasures, good food with friends, meaningful conversations, and the absence of pain. On the right, we have Zeno of Citium, the founder of Stoicism. Zeno wasn't exactly known for throwing epic garden parties. Stoicism is all about reason, living virtuously and accepting what's outside your control. They believe true happiness comes from inner strength, not external pleasures. The pleasure principle. Epicureanism's recipe for happiness. Imagine Epicurus's garden as a haven of tranquility, filled with good company, stimulating discussions, and delicious but simple food. Here, pleasure wasn't about excess, but about savoring the present moment and cultivating meaningful relationships. Epicurus even categorized pleasures into three tiers, necessary pleasures, food, water, shelter, the basics for survival, natural, but not necessary pleasures, friendship, conversation, intellectual pursuits, these enhance life but aren't essential. Vain pleasures. These often lead to pain and suffering, like overindulging in food or chasing fleeting desires. So, the Epicurean motto was live simply. Think deeply. By focusing on what truly matters and avoiding unnecessary desires, they believed you could achieve a state of tranquility and freedom from pain. The ultimate happiness, the path of virtue, Stoicism's guide to inner strength. Now, the Stoics weren't a bunch of joyless robots. They valued pleasure, but they saw it as fleeting and unreliable. True happiness, they argued, comes from within, from living virtuously and acting in accordance with reason. Key Stoic principles include virtue ethics, developing qualities like courage, wisdom, justice, and temperance, amor fati, loving your fate, accepting what's outside your control, and focusing on what you can control, your thoughts and actions, dichotomy of control, distinguishing between things you can control your thoughts and things you can't external events. By cultivating inner strength and accepting life's challenges, the Stoics believed you could achieve a state of emotional resilience and inner peace, regardless of external circumstances. Happiness versus pleasure. The great debate. Digging deeper. So, who wins this philosophical duel? Well, both sides have valid points. Hold on, Zeno. What's wrong with enjoying the good things in life? Why live life devoid of pleasure? A simple, 
well-prepared meal with friends can bring immense joy. But my friend Epicurus, what about fleeting pleasures? Don't they lead to cravings and dissatisfaction? True happiness comes from inner strength, not external rewards. The Epicurean Stoic debate goes beyond a simple pleasure versus no pleasure. Dichotomy. Let's delve deeper into some key points of contention. Zeno, my friend, you Stoics seem to forget the role of pleasure and motivation. Without a taste of the good life, why strive for anything? A little pleasure fuels our desire for growth and achievement. A valid point, Epicurus. But what about the fleeting nature of pleasure? Chasing temporary highs often leads to dissatisfaction and a never-ending cycle of desire. True happiness comes from lasting fulfillment, not fleeting thrills. Let's explore these arguments further. The challenge of desire. Hold on. Not all desires are bad. The desire for knowledge, for example, can lead to a fulfilling life of learning. The key is to distinguish between natural and necessary desires, like good food and those that cause harm, like excessive wealth. But even seemingly harmless desires can become problematic. The initial pleasure of a new gadget fades quickly, leaving us wanting more. True happiness lies in inner peace, independent of external desires. This highlights a core difference. Epicureans believe managing desires leads to a happy life, while Stoics advocate for minimizing desires altogether, finding meaning in suffering. Life throws curveballs, Epicurus. Stoicism teaches us to accept suffering as inevitable. By facing challenges with reason and virtue, we build resilience and inner strength, leading to a deeper sense of meaning. But suffering for no reason isn't noble. Zeno, avoiding unnecessary pain allows us to focus on the good things in life. Let's not glorify hardship. Here, the debate touches on the role of adversity. Stoicism sees challenges as opportunities for growth, while Epicureanism prioritizes minimizing suffering, the role of reason and emotion. Reason is important, Zeno, but emotions are part of the human experience. Suppressing joy and pleasure creates an unbalanced life. We should use reason to guide our enjoyment, not eliminate it entirely. Uncontrolled emotions can lead to poor choices, Epicurus. Stoicism teaches us to use reason to regulate emotions, achieving a state of tranquility. This touches on a fundamental difference. Epicureanism accepts and embraces emotions, while Stoicism emphasizes reason's role in managing them. Perhaps, Zeno, a happy life involves both reason and enjoyment. We can use reason to cultivate healthy desires and savor simple pleasure. Indeed, Epicurus. Stoicism doesn't deny the value of pleasure. It simply emphasizes the importance of inner strength in navigating life's inevitable challenges. The Epicurean. Stoic debate isn't about right or wrong. It's about finding the balance that works for you. Maybe a little Stoic resilience mixed with some Epicurean enjoyment is the recipe for a truly fulfilling life, finding your balance beyond the Stoic Epicurean divide. So, where does this leave us in the modern world? Truth is, both Stoicism and Epicureanism offer valuable tools for navigating the complexities of life. We can learn from both, from the Stoics. Develop your inner strength, cultivate virtues, and focus on what you can control. Practice accepting what's outside your control to avoid unnecessary stress. From the Epicureans, savor the simple pleasures nurture meaningful relationships, and avoid chasing fleeting desires. Learn to appreciate the present moment. The key might be finding a balance. Maybe indulge in a delicious, but not excessive, meal with friends like Epicurus. But with a stoic twist, appreciate the company and the experience, not just the food. Think of it as a happiness buffet. Take what works for you from both schools of thought, putting philosophy into practice.
exercises for everyday happiness. All right, let's get practical. Here are some exercises inspired by Stoicism and Epicureanism to boost your daily happiness. From Stoicism, practice, gratitude journaling. Each day, write down three things you're grateful for. This helps focus on the positive aspects of your life. The daily stoic meditation. Take five to 10 minutes each day to reflect on a stoic quote or principle. Many free resources are available online. Dichotomy of control, exercise. Make a list of things within your control like your attitude and things outside your control like traffic. Focus your energy on the controllable aspects. From Epicureanism, digital detox. Schedule screen, free time each day to disconnect and reconnect with the present moment. Mindful meals, savor your food, eat slowly, focus on the taste and texture and appreciate the company. If you're dining with others, gratitude walks. Take a walk in nature, focusing on the beauty around you. Appreciate the sights, sounds, and smells. Embrace the journey. The pursuit of happiness is a lifelong quest. There you have it, folks. Remember, happiness isn't a destination. It's a journey by incorporating elements of both Stoicism and Epicureanism. You can build a life filled with meaning, resilience, and yes, even a little bit of pleasure. So, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep philosophizing. After all, the greatest philosophers weren't afraid to ask big questions and challenge the status quo. Who knows? Maybe you'll even come up with your own unique recipe for happiness. If you enjoyed this exploration of Stoicism and Epicureanism, let me know in the comments below. What other philosophical topics would you like to delve into? Don't forget to like and subscribe for more philosophical adventures. Until next time, take care and keep seeking wisdom.